A former FBI and current CIA official has admitted to an undercover journalist that they did have agents at January 6th and they do use deep state skullduggery to bring down dissenters. So, is Alex Jones right to sue the CIA and FBI? And is it time to admit that the government are the baddies? <laughs> Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Thanks for joining us on this voyage to truth and freedom. Remember, click the link in the description, become a member of our community. We make additional videos like this every week and you will be supporting us as we wage covert war on the systems of corruption that have been exposed as exactly that. And does it not actually amaze you how quickly these stories are sort of disappeared from the internet? Like, do you remember when it became clear that Pfizer were using all sorts of extraordinary techniques? Do you remember when you found out that censorship was going on at Twitter and that there was all sorts of various techniques used to de-amplify important yet dissenting content. Well, I wonder if this will be another one of those stories. An undercover official has admitted to an undercover journalist that exactly the kind of techniques that are dismissed as conspiracy theory are routinely deployed by the FBI and CIA. And we shouldn't be surprised anyway, should we? Because we know what the CIA did when it came to like a figure like Martin Luther King. They would go to any lengths to destroy that guy, lying about him, tracking him, trying to bring him down, as they would with any dissenter. The trouble is that dissenters Dissenting voices now don't fit to the kind of paradigm that people my age believe they will. Like, it's not Malcolm X. Now, it's figures like Alex Jones that are being tracked and pursued and shut down and controlled by the FBI and the CIA. So what do we do if we are anti-establishment? What do we do if we believe that the government are taking liberties, spying on us, controlling us, using the legacy media to control public space, using dirty tricks to shut down dissenters? What do we do when we realise that power uses the same dirty tricks that it always has, but the aesthetics have strangely shifted. Let's get into this story about the revelation that indeed the FBI, as they have done for many years, use sting operations, honeypot traps, ugh, and dirty tricks to inveigle, beguile, and utilize opponents and shut down dissent. And the fact that Alex Jones now is one of the figures that the deep state fear most. This is a FBI agent, a CIA boss, He's a contract manager over large contract operations. That's a boss. Uh, that's like a mini section chief saying all of this and and admitting all of this like it's no big deal. He needs to be subpoenaed by Congress. Uh, I am planning uh, to launch a lawsuit. Uh, against the CIA and the FBI. We have to bring all this out. So what Alex Jones is talking about, as I'm sure you're aware, is a sting operation where an FBI official has admitted the kind of dirty tricks and deep cover activity that many of us in this space have long suspected and indeed known has gone on. So what do we do once we know that the deep state are deploying illegal tactics and techniques in order to shut down dissent? Let's get into it. An official with the Central Intelligence Agency told an undercover journalist that members of the Federal Bureau of Investigation were in attendance at the protests at the US Capitol on January the 6th, 2021, and also highlighted methods that intelligence agencies use to disempower political opponents. Your reaction to the phrase January 6th will be different depending on what your political perspective is. But I think all of us now should recognize that there were deep state officials and operatives within that crowd. Loads of people have been talking about that. Let me know in the comments for a long, long while that there were CIA there, there were FBI there, there were Capitol Police there, that there were weird decisions made to lay off police forces and all kinds of stuff that if you're familiar with what was once known as the conspiracy theory realm, but is now known essentially as the conspiracy fact territory, is the kind of techniques that have long taken place. So whether or not you think of the January 6 protesters as MAGA lunatics and face-painted shamanic madmen, well, the truth of the situation is that the deep state were involved in observing them and potentially amplifying that protest and creating what have subsequently become known as anything between riots and insurrections. How does that fit? If the same agencies that were trying to destroy Martin Luther King are now trying to destroy Donald Trump. What does that tell you about how the American political landscape is shifting and what the function of the culture and even the culture war is? FBI Director Christopher Wray previously stated in a congressional hearing concerning January 6th that he was not sure there were undercover agents on the scene, doubling down in an answer to Representative Andy Briggs, Republican Arizona, and saying, I do not believe that there were undercover agents on the scene. But now, 
we're all beginning to suspect that whether it's the New York Times reporting on CIA bases within Ukraine, or indeed the reporting on January 6th and the way that event has subsequently been utilised, that agencies like the FBI and CIA have no particular alliance or allegiance when it comes to the cultural ephemera of our time. They will shut down dissent wherever the interests of the powerful are impacted. So in the 1960s, Malcolm X and Martin Luther King were a pain in the ass to the interests of the powerful. Based on what we're learning now, who who are a pain in the ass to the interests of the powerful right now? Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the comments. Let's have a look at some moments from that sting operation together and see if this fits in with the lineage, the long line of FBI and CIA operatives organizing, amplifying, and in many cases, downright creating operations and events that they could then oppose in order to either introduce legislation or shut down dissent. As long as the Bureau is able to progress far enough to be able to put pro-lifers in jail whenever they want, yeah. He's not very focused, is he? Like, he's in the middle of a sting operation. He's staring at his phone. He's just about to reveal important and very sensitive and disruptive information. And isn't he also supposed to be a date? Isn't that what the sting is? Stop looking at your phone. If this was a real date, this would be disgusting behavior. You think that's on the agenda? We can, we can, you can kind of put anyone in jail if you know what to do. How? You set them up. <laughs> you create the situation to where they have no choice but to act on their impulse. And once they act on that impulse, then we call that entrapment. It's a fine line. I like this guy's body language. So you set them up so they have no choice but to act on their impulse. It's a fine line. I think we all know that the CIA and the FBI do stuff like that. We know that they were at January 6th. You can imagine that any social movement, God, going right back to Charles Manson and all that crazy stuff, potentially has the involvement of deep state organizations. But to see it explained in this sort of easy, sort of slightly camp grandmother lexicon sort of takes the pressure off it a bit, doesn't it? Okay, so what the FBI do is they get Martin Luther King to have a number of affairs and at the right moment, that they execute him. So what they did with Malcolm X is they had one of the people that was connected with the Nation of Islam shoot him one day. Oh, history of the deep state sounds almost quite sweet when you put it that way. Thanks! Is, does the Bureau practice entrapment a lot? Yeah, we get really close. Not officially? No. We get as close as we can. <laughs> it's like the deep state for children. We get as close as we can. Do, 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 do. We get as close as we can to it without doing it. So they can entrap some of these pro-lifers into doing things that they don't... Depending, yeah. We call it a nudge. A nudge. A nudge. We can't continue to bring you this glorious, potentially life-changing content without the support of our contents. That's why I've got to ask you. Are you going cold turkey? There's a better way to break bad habits. Fume, look at the problem differently. Instead of drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your bad habit? Fume is an innovative, award-winning, flavored air device that does just that. Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor or harmful chemicals, fume uses flavored air and all natural, delicious flavors. It's a habit you're free to enjoy, and it fills a void in a natural, guilt-free way. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial designed with movable parts, magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers something to do, helpful for breaking your habit. Base was launched in January, which is a weighted stand to rest your fume on. The fume device can be spun around by people more agile, which is good for fidgeting. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits. Pick up the journey pack today. Visit tryfume.com forward slash Russell Brand or scan the QR code, use code Russell Brand for 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's try, F-U-M dot com. Use the code Russell Brand, save an additional 10% off your order today and plus they'll know we sent you that makes us look good. Let's get back to our content without delay. Mm. Sometimes you just gotta give them a quick look just to see what happens, right? And how does that happen? You put a post out there or you have some fake profile say something that triggers, that we know is gonna trigger them, right? Brilliant, isn't it? Because we now know that there are misinformation and disinformation, malinformation units, sometimes funded by state-sponsored media organizations like the BBC or private mega corporations that take all their money from pharma. They're saying, we have to help you with disinformation and misinformation. Here we have it straight from the horse's adorable mouth. That is standard practice to put out disinformation and misinformation posts. We know that all the time. What about that poor dude that just went to prison?
prison for seven months for shit posting about Hillary Clinton. We now know that the deep state does that stuff all the time and even without the testimony of this guy, which of course, if you are an advocate for the political party at the moment, they're currently in ascendance or in success or in office, let's just keep it simple, and you say, oh, you can't trust this guy, he's just an independent employee. Well, Edward Snowden was an independent employee working for the NSA as a contractor and he revealed that. So we have to recognise that information like this has to be taken seriously, even if it's initially utilised to be especially useful, say, when it comes to the framing of January 6th or issues that you might regard as of the right. What we're interested in on this channel is how the deep state and the legacy media will present you with a version of reality that they've pre-chewed, manipulated and downright set up in order to prevent you as an individual having any freedom or power or agency over your own life or your community using whatever means necessary, which is something Malcolm X said. Although, if necessary, we could trick that little guy. Poop, poop, be doo Sometimes you light the fuse and just wait for it to follow, right? Like a railing, mm -hmm. like a, oh. So when a railing happens, that's sometimes that the bureau behind it? Yeah, sometimes. Gone up a few octaves there, he knows January 6th is going, yeah, sometimes. Uh, also, uh, the guy doing the sting is really overplaying it. Oh, like a rally. Oh, tell me more. It's like a call and response Broadway show at this point. Tell me more, tell me more. Did you put up a fight? Who would be like a big influence that you're, influencer that you're after? You're, like a, I don't know, like a, I don't even know these names, like a Fox News person or like a Tucker Carlson or like, uh, oh, I'm sure he's a Right. You always want the biggest and loudest. Like that, what was his name? The one that said uh, the Sandy Hook didn't happen. Alex like, Jones. Yeah, so we were after him. You are? Airport. Are you still after him? Yeah. Why? Because he's broke. He got found guilty and had to pay like $100 million. That's interesting to hear that the deep state in conjunction with legacy media and shadowy agencies and organizations participate in mass media takedowns against public dissenting figures. So what, why were you after him? We're not anymore. Just to get the money from him? Yeah. Was that court case used? Was that a CIA sure was. That's amazing. I mean, that's what's commonly regarded and referred to now as lawfare, where you entrench people in legal situations that are time-consuming and costly and difficult to contend with. That's happened to Alex Jones, it's happening continually to Trump, and they'll attempt to do it to any dissenting voice. Unless you're going on the internet saying, do you know what we should all do? Be compliant and obedient. Take the shot. Wear the mask. Do as you're told. Support Ukraine. Unless you're doing that, if you're trying to introduce any note of complexity, any idea that centralised power is bad, that you can't trust legacy media anymore. You can't trust the deep state. Sooner or later, they'll come for you. In fact, if they don't come for you, it means that what you're doing isn't having any impact. Well, we were looking at all of his followers, commenting, following, like, who's that going to be this to? Right? So, even though it's technically not our, well, not the agency, definitely, but the, the Bureau, for instance, yeah, it's not our purview. It's a civil, it's a civil matter. But, since they got all this access to his stuff and it's there, what can we go find? And did you find anything? I can't tell you. Oh, we did. Uh suddenly he remembers his professional obligations this deep into the day. What this shows you is categorically and indefatigably and undeniably the deep state are involved in operations that stretch the law to the very limit, if not downright break it. And if that's what we know for certain, what can we infer from it? As we continually say on this channel, what do you think those classified files are full of? Information that would make you excited whenever you hear, oh, we're not going to release the information about the Pfizer trials for 75 years. Do you imagine that's good news in there. We're not even going to release the JFK files for another 50 years. What do you imagine is in there? Let's put it plainly once more. If you knew what they do, you would become disobedient. So the next natural step is become disobedient anyway. At least become cynical, sceptical, non-trusting, disobedient, willing to look for alternatives, willing to be awake. Because you can assume now, from what this guy's admitted, that they're involved in anything that could potentially create dissent or disobedience or non-compliance. It's not a bug, it's a feature. It's the way in which they have to work. What do you imagine the CIA and the FBI and other comparable organizations in your nation are set up for? Continue the system, whether that's the state or corporate power and its globalist ends can continue uninterrupted. That's its function. You are the problem. So with Alex Jones. Mm -hmm. For another day, I wonder what's happened between those two days. Don't think I didn't notice there was an outfit change there. Okay, could you tell me some more stuff about your job? Well, maybe. What are you doing later? I think we both know what we're doing later. You were watching him long before anything ended up happening. 
probably. It wasn't my office, but I mean, we would we would have been well aware of what he was doing. And the goal with him was what? Just to bankrupt him? Oh, uh, pretty much. So that's a lot of these cases. They're they're kind of encouraged by the FBI. Yeah, like there's nothing federally federal law we can do, but civilly. We just go at him that way and chop his legs off. And they did. Yeah. So the FBI was happy. We didn't care. We were like, oh. <laughs> just madly eating his skillet of dinner and revealing that the FBI and CIA went out of their way to bankrupt Alex Jones. Now, in all likelihood, your reaction to this will be contingent on whether or not you like Alex Jones. I like Alex Jones. But I think that even if I didn't like Alex Jones, I wouldn't want the CIA and the FBI deciding who they want bankrupted or unpersoned or shut down. And I wouldn't want similar things happening in other nations because the determining factor is not whether or not the person being attacked aligns with your political views at the moment. It's the ability of the state and deep state agencies to deploy these practices whenever they want to. Next time, maybe it will be Van Jones. Maybe it'll be someone that you happen to like. But the fact is, is that the practice itself is wrong. But you said that there were FBI agents in the crowd at J6. There are. There always are when there's a big protest in DC. Just in case it gets out of hand like that. People know that? Why? Do people know that the hero was in the crowd? No, nope, and probably never will. Uh, do you know agents that were there? Mm hmm Really? Yeah. They're the agency now. <laughs> <laughs> Blast out about it. I kind of like that guy. People that are determined to condemn January 6th, people that don't like Donald Trump, people that don't like Alex Jones will look at that and say, oh, well, you can't rely on that guy. I happen to think he's adorable. But the fact is, is that we've known for a long time that the FBI and CIA do stuff like this. After 9-11, they went out of their way to entrap many Muslim people, accusing them of being involved in terrorist plots. In the UK, we're no better. In the 70s and 80s, if you were Irish, you were likely to go to jail for some period of time. The issue is, who's regarded as an opponent? Who's regarded as a terrorist, who's regarded as a dissenting voice, and what is the power of the deep state in conjunction with the media and the judiciary to shut those people down and even imprison them, as they have in some cases. Let's have a look. Last July, three men convicted in a post-9-11 terrorism sting were freed from prison by a judge who deemed their lengthy sentences unduly harsh and unjust, and decried the FBI's role in radicalizing them in a plot to blow up New York synagogues and shoot down National Guard planes. Onto Williams, David Williams, and Laguerre Payen, three of the men known as the Newberg Four, were hapless, easily manipulated, and penurious petty criminals caught up for more than a decade in a scheme driven by overzealous FBI agents and a dodgy informant. U.S. District Judge Colleen McMahon said in her ruling, this is quite a famous story of free men who clearly had been involved in some criminal activity, ultimately manipulated into an orchestrated plot by the FBI in order to simply arrest them. Whatever that is, and you can question and view the morality of it according to your own metrics. But it's certainly not an investigation, is it? It's not the FBI. We're just doing an investigation. That suggests something's happening and we're going to investigate it. That's nothing is happening and we're going to create it. The real lead conspirator was the United States, McMahon wrote in granting the men's request for compassionate release effective in three months. She said it was heinous of the men to agree to participate in what she called the government's made-for-TV movie. Not even box office stuff. This is not Mission Impossible 6. This is that first Mission Impossible, which was a bit weird looking. But the judge added, the sentence was the product of a fictitious plot to do things that these men had never remotely contemplated and that were never going to happen. Prosecutors said the defendants had spent months scouting targets and securing what they thought were explosives and a surface-to-air missile, aiming to shoot down planes at the Air National Guard base in Newburgh, New York, and blow up synagogues in Riverdale, a heavily Jewish part of the Bronx. They were arrested there after allegedly planting bombs that were in fact packed with inert explosives supplied by the FBI. I sometimes wonder if you can map this on to broader analyses of reality that we're all participating in a kind of rigged game, locked onto social media, curtailed and controlled by ordinary legacy media outlets, fed opinions, fed reality, chained to jobs and belief systems that mean that even if we don't transgress or participate in anything as obnoxious and extraordinary as an FBI sting, our reality is being marshaled and controlled in so many ways now that we're essentially in a simulation, even if you don't want to get fully into the kind of matrix synthetic reality philosophy your reality is curated and controlled. Your choice is almost pre-made. Choice is an illusion created between those with power and those without.
In 2011, The Guardian reported the FBI is running a sting operation across America targeting to a large extent the Muslim community by luring people into fake terror plots. It's something they do all the time. So really, all we're hearing that witness say is, you know that thing that we used to do to Muslim folk? Well, now we do it to alt-right or right-wing pundits. You know what we used to do to Muslims or civil rights activists in the 60s? Well, now we do that to dissenting right-wing voices. So you see, all that's really shifted in the many cultural fluctuations is that the establishment has deployed cultural issues to legitimize the persecution of different groups. Different groups are now being targeted and persecuted. Maybe those type of groups always were persecuted. Who knows? But the fact is that the CIA and the FBI have long created these kind of operations and they create them still. So remember, wherever you stand on the political spectrum, it shouldn't matter if it's like gay activists or right-wing activists or Muslim activists, feminists or whatever. You should just say, I don't want the state doing that. The state shouldn't be involved in that. I don't want to fund that. The FBI Bureau sent informants to trawl through Muslim communities, hang out in mosques and community centers, and talk of radical Islam in order to identify possible targets sympathetic to such ideals. If suitable suspects are identified, FBI agents then run a sting, often creating a fake terror plot in which it helps supply weapons and targets. As reported by The Intercept in 2015, informant-led sting operations are central to the FBI's counter-terrorism program. Of 508 defendants prosecuted in federal terrorism-related cases in the decade after 9-11, 243 were involved with an FBI informant, while 158 were targets of sting operations. Of those cases, an informant or FBI undercover operative led 49 defendants in their terrorism plots. Bloody hell! So in 10% of them, the FBI were actually in charge. In half of them, the FBI were there. That means that at least 50% of the terrorism that you're scared of is the FBI. And that's what we know about. Imagine what you don't know about. Imagine the stuff where they haven't left a trail of breadcrumbs everywhere like lunatics. Half of the stuff you're believing in is created by the legacy media. The other half is set up by the deep state. We're basically living in a simulation. In these cases, the FBI says paid informants and undercover agents are foiling attacks before they occur. But the evidence suggests, and a recent Human Rights Watch report on the subject illustrates, that the FBI isn't always nabbing would-be terrorists so much as setting up mentally ill or economically desperate people to commit crimes they could never have accomplished on their own. Yeah, that sounds a little more like it. Or potentially the four guys in Moscow that have just been arrested for that attack when you look at them and how that whole thing's playing out. You can't assume anything anymore. The reason they want to shut down indeed Alex Jones, or me, or Joe Rogan, or anybody, is because we ask these questions continually. And there's no doubt that occasionally channels like this one make mistakes. But the deep state and the establishment aren't interested in that. What they're interested in is being able to control reality. Be able to control reality in order to preserve the system. Since the September 11th attacks, the US government has prosecuted over 800 people on terrorism charges. Many included a similarly troubling mix of judicial and law enforcement bias. The people who ended up in the crosshairs were often not serious serious threats, but rather those susceptible to the tactics employed by the authorities. Ramsey Kassam, a City University of New York School of Law professor said, It is alarming when you look across these cases and see an overrepresentation of suspects who were mentally deficient, marginalised or otherwise vulnerable being the target of these sting operations. And it raises questions about the reality of the terrorist threat that was depicted by the FBI. Yes, you have to look at that entire time in a new light, because what seemed like a raft of terrorist threats across the nation, now it seems, was at least least 50% a deep state operation. You might be a person who at that point was very pro-America and patriotic and therefore assumed that there were terrorists everywhere. But now, if you're patriotic and pro-America, it's you they're targeting. Instead of hardened terrorists, the war on terror as it was waged at home often went after people who posed no real threat to the United States. The wide-ranging use of undercover informants was one of the most controversial tactics used by the FBI and US prosecutors in domestic counterterrorism cases. By some estimates, the FBI and employed more than 15,000 informants across the United States, many of whom were tasked with going on so-called fishing expeditions in which they infiltrated communities without knowledge of any actual criminal plot. Yeah, that's actually minority report stuff, isn't it? Here we go again. Look, I'm not with the ACLU on this, Jeff. But let's not kid ourselves. We are arresting individuals who have broken no law. But they will. Like once you're saying, well, look, that person was willing to participate in a plot, but that's an odd moral and philosophical game. Would you sleep with this person if you believe they want you to sleep with them? Would you pick up this money that's been left on the floor? Well, maybe if you're poor or vulnerable or desperate, that's not the same as a malevolent bad actor going out of their way to create havoc and chaos. And where it seems like we are now 
is the ongoing criminalization of the domestic population in order to shut down the threat that just ordinary patriots now represent in America hell-bent on centralized power. FBI agents are rated and scored by their ability to recruit informants as well as how prolific those informants are, Kasim said. Even if they didn't join law enforcement to do knock and talks or surveil people at mosques, they discover that if they don't fulfill that tasking, their career prospects might be hampered. In addition to sowing paranoia and mistrust in communities across the country, the heavy use of informants led to an abundance of cases in which seemingly innocent people found themselves targeted. Informants themselves often had their own motivations for delivering results to their handlers, whether it was to obtain financial rewards from the US government or to escape their own legal or immigration problems. The years after 9-11 saw a shift away from the more traditional role of informants as the passive eyes and ears of the federal government inside an organized criminal syndicate towards something far more central, active and participatory, Kasim said. Informants proposed so-called terrorism plots, funded them, provided means of execution, coaching and even coached the targets of stings over prolonged periods of time in order to enable prosecutors to paint their conduct as criminally punishable. In essence, what we have here is evidence that the CIA and FBI and presumably agencies whose names we don't even know frequently participate in the creation of dynamics that allow the persecution, prosecution and criminalization of indeed entire populations at certain points. And this is not entirely new. It's just the ability to practice it at scale is new. In the 1970s in our country, if you had an Irish accent, you were in real jeopardy. In the 60s in the United States of America, if you were a participant in the movement for civil rights or voting rights or the ability to freely communicate or travel on public transport, you were targeted by the CIA and FBI. And now, if you're Alex Jones, with theories and ideas, many of which are accurate, some of which are not accurate, like anybody who's postulating and speculating, you are a target. Or even if you are an ordinary American who had doubts about the way your country is going, about increased central authority, increased censorship, increased anti-protest laws, new abilities using AI to monitor and control entire populations, you are now a terrorist. What this story shows us is that unless you happen to be one of those people who by convenience or design agrees with the current agenda of the powerful, you are potentially a terrorist. Are we all basically terrorists now? That's just the question I'm asking in response to what I think. But more importantly, what do you think? Let me know in the comments and chat. Remember, we make this content every day. Click the link in the description, become a supporter of our movement so we can continue to expose, investigate and analyze these important stories and ideas. More important than any of that, if you can, please stay free. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.